On the next McDougal MD, things under your sink that could make you sick. And dealing with diabetes. Don't miss it. This is Hello Channel. In a few minutes, you'll meet a woman who was poisoned by common household products you probably have in your own home. It happens more often than you think. It could happen to you and your family. We'll tell you what to watch out for. Plus, Dr. John has answers to your questions about how to live with diabetes. I'm Mary McDonough, and you're watching McDougal MD. Fine. You are so sweet, Mary. I am. Oh, I fooled you. <laughs> sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet is the operative word. Yes. Because yes. I want to talk to you about uh, too much sweet too and much sweet. Uh, diabetes. Oh. You know, sugar diabetes. And sugar diabetes is a really common problem, and it's becoming more common. You know, there are two kinds of diabetes, and, and I want to separate them out for you right now so we, mm -hmm. can, we can talk about both of them a little bit. Uh, one is what we call the childhood kind of diabetes, not because only children get it, but it's the most common type of diabetes in children. Actually, half the people are over the age of 19 who get the childhood type. That's juvenile diabetes. Juvenile, right, type 1. I lost a friend of mine, my friend, actress Dana Hill. Um, I lost that disease. It's a, it's, a, it's a devastating disease, to say the least. Yes. But we do know the cause, and so therefore we can prevent it. And the second kind of diabetes is type 2 or adult type diabetes. And we know the cause of that also. And not only can we prevent it, but even after people have type 2 diabetes, we can cure it in many cases. And I love to use that word mm, cure it. I was, cure. Taught, I was taught as a medical doctor never to use that word, particularly in, in, in relationship to diet and exercise and things you can do without drugs. But you can cure it. But how, the juvenile diabetes, yes. how, how, do you, how is that? Handle. Well, so juvenile diabetes, really the, the type 1, is a, a kind of diabetes where the, the insulin-producing cells of the pancreas mm -hmm. are destroyed. And they're destroyed due to an immune reaction, autoimmune reaction, we call it, where the body attacks itself. Mm -hmm. Now, I ever, never understood why the body would attack itself. It seemed like such a dumb thing for the body to do, to attack itself. But we have discovered, scientists have discovered over the years, what triggers the body to attack itself. Now, the way it was initially discovered is they looked around the world to see where type 1 diabetes was common and where it was rare. And what they found was almost a straight line correlation between type 1 diabetes and cow milk protein consumption. So what they did is they took cow milk, cow's milk back to the laboratory, they fed it to experimental animals, and they were able to cause the animal to make antibodies to the cow's milk that weren't just specific to the, ant to the cow's milk, they also attacked the animal's mm. pancreas, the insulin producing mm. cells. The classic study done in children was published in July 1992 in the New England Journal of Medicine. They looked at 150 kids with type 1 diabetes, yes. examined their blood, and found that all of them have had high levels of antibodies uh -huh. to cow milk protein. And actually, the antibodies were directed to one specific cow milk protein and 17, a, a segment of 17 amino acids on that cow milk protein that antibody was directed to. Okay, so what you're saying that is if, if my child had juvenile diabetes, isn't it a little risky and wild for you to say just take that an take um, cow's milk out of their diet and then they'll be all better? You, you said this was a human child, not a cow, right? <laughs> this is it, not a calf. Yes, but, but I'm well, telling you because we want to know this, don't no, we? You want to that, feed a, children human breast milk. In fact, human breast right. milk is protective against type 1 diabetes. Now, let but me. But only some, some kids have this and some don't. That's right. So. It's just like some people smoke cigarettes, get lung cancer, some, some don't. Some people don't. Okay. There, there, there are some There's reasons we know why some get it. Yeah, bad luck, uh, uh, genetics may play mm -hmm. a role in it, but these are uncontrollable things. What happens is this, is that in some children who become susceptible, the intestinal barrier becomes uh, compromised so that the cow milk protein can get through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream. We mm -hmm. call it a leaky, leaky gut. gut. Now you have cow milk protein floating around in the blood. The body looks at the cow milk protein and says, that's foreign, that's a foreign protein. That's like a bacteria or a virus. I gotta make an antibody against it. Makes the antibody against the cow milk protein, but it's not just specific. It finds those same 17 amino acids that are on the cow milk protein. It finds it on the insulin producing <laughs> it cells. It comes and gets it of the pancreas, same sequence is there, and it attaches, and it takes about five to seven years, and it destroys mm. the child's pancreas, or adult's pancreas, bite full after bite full of cheese, spoonful after spoonful of ice cream. Now, that's type one. Type two mm -hmm. is a disease of affluence, 
It's a disease from eating lots and lots rich of rich of food. Foods. And it's associated with being fat, but you don't have to be fat, but you usually are. What happens is the fat in the food, and we demonstrated this way back in 1927. We fed fat to medical students, and what happens is their blood sugar went up because the fat paralyzed the insulin. Now, a lot of people think that uh, diabetes is due to sugar. It's not. In that same experience, experience, uh, experiment, they fed uh, a high-carbohydrate diet that was actually half sugar and half starch to these medical students, and their blood sugars did not go up. They stayed huh. low. It's not so, the sugar. Right. So you take that experience. Uh -huh. And, and, and this experience, by the way, is very extensive in population studies these days. We see, for example, the Pima Indians in Tucson, Arizona, who didn't have any diabetes 75 years ago, uh, were put on a reservation, forced to eat the rich Western diet, and of course they did it without much reluctance, uh, forced to eat the rich Western diet, and they have developed a population where half the people have diabetes. Hmm. We see that in the, uh, various Polynesian so islands. So what's our solution here? Okay. Now, if you take somebody who has type 2 diabetes, the adult uh -huh. type, and you remove the cause, which is that rich diet and not enough exercise, and you put them on a high-carbohydrate diet, lots of rice, beans, potatoes, vegetables, and so on, what happens is their blood sugars come down, and the University of Kentucky Medical School reports that they can get three-quarters two-thirds to three-quarters of adult-type diabetics off all their insulin wow. and almost all of them off all their diabetic pills. By changing, changing their, their diet. diet. That's right, to a high-carbohydrate diet. Now, wow. you add some That's exercise to that, some weight loss to that, and you've really helped right. these people tremendously. And plus, it's the same diet that keeps both kinds of diabetics from having complications like blindness, heart attacks, and so on. There you go. There you have it, everybody. Now we know. Thank you. That's that's interesting facts. It's well, all the diet very welcome. again, John. Well, diet's a big thing. Coming up after a brief break, Dr. Lynn Marshall and Judy Spence will join us to talk about dangerous household products. I can't wait for this. Stay with us. I don't know about this. Hello, I'm Nastasia, and I'd like to introduce you to Hello Channel, the innovative new way to learn English as a second language. If you can learn English, your opportunities expand. Knowing English allows you greater job options, more money, and a better lifestyle. Here's the best part. Learning English is now easy because Hello Channel brings it right to your home. Come join our classroom. Enjoy great entertainment and improve your vocabulary, all while you watch TV. A brighter future is ahead if you'll just say hello. And welcome back. With us we have Dr. Lynn Marshall. She's uh, with the Environmental Clinic in Toronto. And we have Judy Spence, who's a nurse, who's also president of the Environmental Society. I, I don't have that quite right. What is it? Environmental Illness Society. Environmental, close enough. Mm. And uh, let, let's start with you, Dr. Marshall. Uh, what kind of training did you get to become an environmental medical doctor specialist? Um, I guess I don't consider myself a specialist. I consider myself a doctor who has a special interest in the in area of environment and health. So are you a general practitioner, a family practitioner by training? Family physician by training, and I did additional training through the American Academy of Environmental Medicine in the United States, mm -hmm. and uh, because we did not have similar training in Canada, and uh, eventually got a fellowship from that organization. And, uh, well, what is different about an environmental doctor than, uh, say, the, the type of practice an internist like my, me would practice? Um, an environmental physician is really more interested in connecting health problems with uh, environmental exposures, looking at the impact that different exposures we all have in everyday life uh, on our health. If I came to you, what would some of my complaints be? Uh, could be almost anything, but usually what you would have noticed is that some of your symptoms were linked with exposures that didn't seem to bother other people, but they definitely, definitely seemed to bother me. you. And you mm -hmm. try and find out what that is. You know, right. Mary, they forgot to teach me about environmental medicine in medical school. Well, John, I think you should go back. <laughs> <laughs> They still, well, don't, is, they still don't teach it much, do they? Well, it, it's, it's, it's coming. It's okay. uh, um, a, a new, new wish area, mm -hmm. only for the last 50 years or so. Um, but it, it has been expanding. The occupational physicians now have broadened out to include environmental medicine in their uh, work. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, very good. Um, their focus, of course, is primarily on occupational Work, sure, work exposure related. in the work. Yeah. Sure, whereas the environmental physician's uh, interest is broader based. It's uh, any age group, 
from uh -huh. children right. through to elderly, right. and uh, interested in home uh, exposures as well as workplace and school exposures also. Judy oh. Spence, how did you get interested in environmental medicine? I got sick. Personal thing. <laughs> it dragged you right into it. It yes. certainly did. It was uh, like getting hit on the head with a two by four. Okay, you have, you tell have us to a little bit about it. Oh, was I, it in your home? Is that where you first started to notice it? Yes, yes. I was actually renovating my home and uh, was I had set up a workshop and was using uh, oil paints, alkyd based paints, lacquers, epoxies, and so forth uh, in the home. So I had actually absorbed a lot of the mm. chemicals through the skin and by breathing them, the fumes uh -huh. and so forth. So I ended up uh, becoming quite toxic. I was poisoned. Mm -hmm. by the and what chemicals. were your symptoms? What were you feeling? Ah, uh, well, um, they were very, very uh, diverse. But um, in a matter of four hours, I uh, had gone from being a healthy 38-year-old mum uh -huh. uh, to a totally disabled. Um, a woman who was reacting 24 hours a day. I would have reactions that would last for two, three hours, would settle down just a bit. 10, 15 minutes later, I'd get mm. another hit from something else I was not aware of. When you got out of the room, didn't that solve the problem? I could not get out of the room. Uh -huh. uh, my house was a chemical soup because, again, mm. all the fumes and so forth were in the home that I was, you know, renovating. Um, and I was reacting to everything from the toilet paper roll in the bathroom to hubby's um, aftershave to the kids' deodorant to the dog to everything in the home. I became what's called a universal reactor. I reacted to everything man-made and natural. Well, so that, where that you makes go? life tough. Where yeah. Do you go? And what did you? So what did, where did you go? What did you do? Being a nurse, it certainly um, it struck me that this was very very odd. I've never been trained in this area. It didn't fit any of the paradigms that I'd ever been exposed to. Um, it didn't fit any of the profiles for the d diseases that I had experienced. Well, you probably thought you had something else that you know. It was being it, a nurse it was a psychiatric some... problem, wasn't it? No, no, no. I knew it wasn't that. Are you uh, sure? I mean, <laughs> if you'd come to me, that's what I was told to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you just thought you were going crazy, but you knew you were sick. No, actually, um, to be very frank, the very uh, the very first indicators I had that there was a problem was that my urine was coming out blue, green, wow. orange, and so forth, which said to me I was in big trouble. Something was and wrong. And likely to do with the headaches I'd had for a couple of months that the doctors mm. just dismissed and so forth. Um, but no, I was having muscle spasms. I was yeah. going into shock, uh, li blue lips, wow. blue fingers. Uh, there was poor oxygen. Asthma started. Seizures started. So it was quite quite. That See there was any something. doctors about this? Oh sure, oh, sure. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, I saw my regular physician. Probably did lots of tests on you for um, everything else. He gave me anti. Um, I guess, no, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it is. It's, it's, it's <laughs> a psychiatric problem. <laughs> Well, uh, no, first she was lucky. <laughs> uh, we started with um, analgesics for pain, oh, yeah. you know, your aspirins, oh, yeah. and then we treat went the to non steroidal anti inflammatories. Treat those, treat those symptoms. symptoms, I know that one. And then there was a recognition finally after um, I insisted, you know, that I really stuck to my story because it was real. The family was seeing me experience it. I mean, you pass out and so forth. Uh -huh. uh, muscle spasms all the time, uh, could not tolerate foods. Um, As and a so nurse, forth. did you start to figure this out on your own? Yes. Well, I knew that it had to have something to do with the chemicals I was working with. Is that I ran a renovation company years ago, and I thought I was very safe with my employees, teaching them you know good techniques and so forth. But then there's to understand the nuances. What really is a safe environment? Mm. Uh, how much air do you actually have to have when it says ventilate well? Um, um. They're not. In the instructions are not there for people using home products. I.e., uh, I was holding sponges with paints in my hand as I was making bleached oak cupboards. Well, nice. how did you get this? How did you get it solved? What, yeah, what how did you steps figure did you it all out? Um, I was bedridden for about four months. I could only crawl from my bed to the bathroom and back. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, enough of the toxins came down. My body handled enough of it that I was able to start getting outside in the spring. And I started to go to the libraries, um, uh, our national health libraries, and started to read the books and understood more about toxicology. I would sit there absolutely fascinated by what I was reading. So you saved yourself? You didn't go to see an environmental specialist? doctor? 
I did eventually. 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 No. eventually. Did you see Dr. Marshall? <laughs> no, she's no. in a different city. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. But it, it finally dawned on me that it had to do with the environment. I went through the yellow pages and said, well, yeah. environmental medicine must sure. be where it's at. And that was a six-month waiting list. Right. Wow. So six months. Mm -hmm. Now, in, indeed, what I had done is I had gone a few times to the emergency ward of our nearby hospital, and I said, I'm working with chemicals. This is what happened. Can you do dialysis? Can we get the chemicals <laughs> out of my... Can we assess? Wow. Yeah, that's and one of my questions. So, Dr. Marshall, is there any way that, you know, because there are people who come and say that they're, they're loaded with toxins and that's their problem. Is there any way to detoxify somebody? Yes, but um, we're, it, it's still an, an area of uh, interest and of research, and it's very slow, very slowly developing. Mm -hmm. What has been found, I think, I think what's starting to emerge are the mechanisms and trying to understand what are the underlying um, problems. So there are some well, solutions, but not, not very many. Well, the, solu the solution is to get away from those the, things, isn't it? The get solutions, away. first of all, are Just avoidance. Get away. Now, be aware yes, of what it might I, be. Being aware is very important. And if one can generally lower the level of exposures that right. one has to things that but, are known but I, but I want some quick fixes. Maybe when we come well, back, we, you can give us some quick fixes. Back, I want the pill <laughs> that will solve the problem. That's right. Well, oh, we're going to try and help with that pill and show you some safe replacements placements for toxic household products when we continue right after these messages. Hello. That's right, I said hello. I'm talking about an exciting new television channel that will change your life. My name is Ruth, and I want you to be one of the first to know about Hello Channel. Hello Channel is designed to teach you to speak English. Anyone can learn. We offer something for everyone. You'll see programming for children, teenagers, and adults, all on different levels. With Hello Channel, you'll hear, see, read, and speak English as you're watching entertaining television programs, making it easy to learn. If you've always wanted to learn English, but haven't had a chance, Hello Channel is perfect for you. Start today, and remember, for a brighter future, just say hello. Welcome back. With us is Bernard Miller, a man who's in pain all the time, who needs that detoxification that, that Dr. We were Marshall talking was talking about. about. Yes, Judy you're Smith. right, John. So yes, they may I have do. the answer for you. Yeah. Uh, why are you in pain all the time? I'm in pain because I was poisoned by chemicals, and one of the ways in which it manifests is that I have fibromyalgia, mm. which is characterized by constant pain. But why aren't you better? Why are you, you stay away from all these things now, don't you? I stay away from all these things when I can. If I were to stay away from them completely, I would have to live in a bubble. As soon as I come into even this studio, there are products around me which I can't avoid, which affect me. Mm -hmm. They never used to before they I got sick. They affect you immediately? They affect me within seconds. I can normally tell my eyes start to sting, my mucous membranes start to burn, and then I know I'm reacting. And you think you're in need of some detoxification? I know I'm in need of some detoxification. Well, maybe we'll have the answer on that in a moment. Yeah. You probably want some to products that. that are... Um, that are that friendly. Are, yeah, that are Absolutely. I use a whole range of products which don't contain the chemicals which I know make me sick. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a personal matter. Different people will react to different things. So they've got to try and see. But for any household product you've got, and I have to say, a lot of the household products are killers, there are safer alternatives. Mm -hmm. One way is to make it yourself. There are books like this which will tell you how to make your own household products. Okay. And they'll tell you things like mix olive oil, white vinegar, and warm water, and you can make a, an olive oil wood, furnish, uh, wood furniture polisher. Oh, great. And with that polish, you can actually go out and buy one ready-made. Oh, take that. Here is one. Okay, here's one. So you it's don't have friendly. to go back to doing it yourself. You're not going back to the Middle Ages. Right. Anything you want to do, there's a safe alternative. You can go out and get it. It's avail it is available, just so well, we know. Cleaning, cleaning is a problem also. And cleaning is one, a problem. One of the things that, that I always learned when I was in my training was the solution to pollution is dilution, which means you can just use plain water to clean most things. 
that works. You for don't most have things. to use. You don't have to lose. But use. people live in a society in which they want things to be brighter than bright. Now you're holding mm -hmm. liquid bleach there, liquid and bleach. it's a safe alternative because it's non-chlorine. So for a lot of people who react to chlorine, mm -hmm. it will be something they can use. And it's probably better for the environment as well. It is a lot better for the environment. We're Let me just so pass those over that. here. Sure. We're going to go through Great these. Soap. Okay. Yes, this soap. That soap this is not good. only good in itself in that it doesn't contain harmful. Uh, chemicals generally, but it actually helps with the process of detoxing through the skin. Does it will it really? help to dry out the chemicals. Oh. And I brought a deodorant because Mina there Tom. was a tragic story a couple of months ago in Britain. 16 year old boy died overdosing on deodorant sprays. When they held a post mortem, he was found to have 10 times the lethal levels of butane and propane in his wow. body which had come from the propellants in the aerosol. Now here we're also going to go through That's these really, really quick because we don't have that much more time, but this is an, um, a drain opener. That's right. People put sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid in their drains to clear them. Mm -hmm. Apart from anything else, they cause chemical reactions and make them really sick. Mm -hmm. These are natural enzymes. They natural. will slowly dissolve. There is do good. they work? People they always do say, oh, work. is it going to get my clothes clean? And they will clean? slowly, over a couple of hours, dissolve things that the hydrochloric acid mm -hmm. might clear in a few mm -hmm. minutes, but they won't make you sick in the process. What else do we have here? Real quick, we have tile and bath cleaner. Toilet bowl cleaner. Toilet bowl cleaner. cleaner. It's essential and, and it works a, just as well as anything you might have. A natural washing liquid. Oh, this is probably oh. ammonia. Vinegar. This is probably no, no. vinegar and water. No ammonia. <laughs> it's vinegar. Vinegar and water. Some people and can't cleaner. tolerate um, vinegar, so take products that don't have yeah. it. People right. have got to find out what works for themselves. They've got to look at the labels. And educate They've got to say, this works for me. This makes me sick. I'll stay away from well, it. Well, thanks for the right. advice. Thank you very, You're very most much. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is great. Thank you for being here. Learn English at home. Just say hello. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Welcome back. With us is Bernard Miller, a man who's in pain all the time, who needs that detoxification that, that Dr. We were Marshall talking was talking about. about. Yes, you're Spence. right, John. So they yes, may I have do. the answer for you. Uh, yeah. Why are you in pain all the time? I'm in pain because I was poisoned by chemicals and one of the ways in which it manifests is that I have fibromyalgia, mm. which is characterized by constant pain. But why aren't you better? Why aren't you stay away from all these things now, don't you? I stay away from all these things when I can. If I were to stay away from them completely, I would have to live in a bubble. As soon as I come into even this studio, there are products around me which I can't avoid, which affect me. Mm. They never used to before I got sick. Immediately? They affect me within seconds. I can normally tell my eyes start to sting, my mucous membranes start to burn, and then I know I'm reacting. And you think you're in need of some detoxification? I know I'm in need of some detoxification. Well, maybe we'll have the answer on that in a moment. Yeah. You probably have some products that. that are... Um that are that friendly. Are, yeah, that are Absolutely. I use a whole range of products which don't contain the chemicals which I know make me sick. Mm -hmm. Now it's a personal matter. Different people will react to different things. So they've got to try and see. But for any household product you've got, and I have to say, a lot of the household products are killers there are safer alternatives. Mm -hmm. One way is to make it yourself. There are books like this which will tell you how to make your own household products. Okay. And they'll tell you things like mix olive oil, white vinegar, and warm water, and you can make a, an olive oil wood, furnish, uh, wood furniture polisher. Oh, great. And with that polish, you can actually go out and buy one ready-made. Take that. Here is one. Okay, here's one. So it's you don't have friendly. to go back to doing it yourself. You're not going back to the Middle Ages. Right. Anything you want to do, you can there's go a out safe and get it. It's avail it is available, just so no, we know. Cleaning, cleaning is a problem also, and cleaning is one, a problem. one of the things that, that I always learned when I was in my training was the solution to pollution is dilution, which means you can just use plain water to clean most things. 
that works for you don't have things. to use you don't have to lose but leaders. people live in a society in which they want things Go to be out, brighter yeah. than bright now you're oh, holding geez. liquid mm -hmm. bleach there liquid and bleach. it's a safe alternative because it's non-chlorine so for a lot of people who react to chlorine mm -hmm. it will be something they can use and it's probably better for the environment as well it is a lot better for the environment We're let me just so pass those over that. here sure. we're going to go through great these. soap okay. yes this soap that soap is not good. only good in itself in that it doesn't contain harmful uh, chemicals generally but it actually helps with the process of detoxing through the skin Does it will it help really? to dry out the chemicals oh. and i brought a deodorant because there was a tragic story a couple of months ago in britain 16 year old boy died overdosing on deodorant sprays when they held a post-mortem he was found to have 10 times the lethal levels of butane and propane in his wow. body which had come from the propellants in the aerosol. Now here we're also going to go through That's these really, really quick because we don't have that much more time but this is an, um, a drain opener. That's right. People put sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid in their drains to clear them. Mm -hmm. Apart from anything else, they cause chemical reactions and make them really sick. Mm -hmm. These are natural enzymes. These are all they will natural. slowly dissolve. Are they as good? They're do, as do they work? People they always do say, oh, work. is it going to get my clothes clean? And they will clean? slowly, over a couple of hours, dissolve things that the hydrochloric acid mm -hmm. might clear in a few mm -hmm. minutes, but they won't make you sick in the process. What else do we have here? Real quick, we have tile and bath cleaner. Toilet bowl cleaner. Toilet bowl cleaner. cleaner. And Essential and, we have and it works a, just as well as anything you might have. natural washing liquid. Oh, this is probably oh. ammonia. Vinegar. This is probably vinegar. vinegar and water. No ammonia. It's <laughs> vinegar. Vinegar and water. Some and people carpet can't cleaner. tolerate um, vinegar, so take products that don't have yeah. it. People right. have got to find out what works for themselves. They've got to look at the labels. And educate They've got to say, this works for me. This makes me sick. I'll stay away from well, it. Well, thanks for the advice. Thank you very, You're very welcome. much. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is great. Thank you for being Hello, my name is Javier. I'm from Spain. I learned English. So can you. Watch Hello Channel. And welcome back. Rejoining us, we have uh, Lynn Marshall, Dr. Marshall, and we have Judy Spence. And do you have a solution for Bernard? Uh, I mean, he needs to be detoxified. Well, Bernard needs to see a physician who specializes well, here's in one right environmental here. Right medicine. Here. That's right. He needs to be assessed as to what exactly he needs. Detox may be part of what he needs, and he should actually be followed up by a professional. I did have detoxification. I did have IV supplementation. I was able to remove chemicals and heavy mm -hmm. metals from my body, and I was able to turn off the reactions. That worked for me. Dr. Marshall, isn't that a little controversial, the IV uh, uh, vitamins and other agents, EDTA and so on? It is, um, and I think it warrants a lot more investigation. Certainly empirical evidence uh, has been, though, that the uh, intravenous supplementation has been very helpful in people who have been... Uh, why, why hasn't it been studied? Poisoned. To me, it, it's, it's, it's just logical, and it's, it seems like it would be so easy to study. Here you've got a uh, chemical substance that people can make money off of, drug companies, mm -hmm. IV, vitamin C, IV, so on. Mm -hmm. uh, they ought to be investing in properly controlled studies to see whether this works or not. Uh, what's the whole... Hold Especially up. if it's helping people. Well, well certainly empirically it, it appears to be mm -hmm. and um, also there are other other mechanisms of support with enzyme <coughs> supplementation as well as nutrient supplementation that, that helps uh, detoxification via sauna um, along with massage well, exercise yeah. and so on. Not going to hurt. And the Environmental yeah, Illness Society is actually raising funds for research and we work with the uh, Medical Research Council of Canada and for fund Protein. Can you give us a number, Judy, that someone might call in case anybody is having some chemical sensitivities and this sounds very familiar to you? What is a number that they could call? The Environmental Illness Society has a toll-free number in Canada. It's 1-877-362-1103. In the U.S., would you like a U.S. Yes, yes definitely. Uh, people can contact MCS Referral and Resource, and they are at 410. The area code is 410 362 6400. Well, thank, thank you very you much. So it was really much. Great thank you so much. Thank you all for show. being we wish here. You the best. Hope you get yes. better. Thank you very and much. Thank you very much Feel for joining better. us. Yes, we'll see oh. you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for being here.